Chapter 5 in geometry focuses on relationships that happen within triangles. And today we're going to focus on this section 5.1 that is about mid-segments of triangles. To understand what a mid-segment is, let's take a look at a picture like this. In this picture we can tell that they're talking about mid-segment if this segment right here that runs from B and C is actually created from midpoints. So in other words, if B were a midpoint of this side over here, then that means that AB and BD would have to be two equal pieces. B actually cuts AD in half, so it has two equal pieces. Now, if we want this to truly be a mid-segment, C would also have to be a midpoint on this side between A and E, which means that AC and CE would have to be equal. Now, I just want to caution you. There are kind of a couple red flags that come up with this section. One of them is that B is a midpoint of this side of AD, so it cuts these two into equal pieces. C is a midpoint of this side, so it cuts this into two equal pieces. But these four pieces are not all equal to each other. So notice I used a marking of one on this side, marking of two on that side. You do have to consider that. Now, often when I talk about mid-segments, we're talking about the relationship from this side to this one. And there's really two ways that you can write that. If I knew DE and I cut it in half, that would tell me how long BC is. I think one also important idea is that if you want to find DE, that if I take BC and multiply it by 2, that that could also create that relationship. I think sometimes people have an easier time multiplying BC by 2 than sometimes cutting DE in half. So I guess that's just something to kind of consider as we go through this next part. Okay, let's take a look now at let's cut this part right here, right in half. Okay, so if I'm going to look at this part Again, I'm looking for midpoints. I can tell this must be the midpoint over here because there's two equal pieces. This must be a midpoint over here because there's two equal pieces. Now this theorem we can't use unless that midpoint piece happens. So these two sides have to have a relationship. So if I were to take this mid-segment here and double it, it would give me this one. So I can start out with 5x minus 2 equals, and we can take 4, and we can double it. So if I were to look at this segment, this 4 times 2 would give me 8. So it would be 5x minus 2 equals 8. I could add 2 to both sides. five x equals ten and then divide both sides by five and they get x equals two now in this one they just want us to solve for x and some of these not only are they going to want us to solve for x but also they're probably going to want us to go through and uh, plug it in in one of the sides and actually find a length so just something to kind of consider and keep in mind Okay, let's look at this other side now. In this one, remember, in order to be able to do this, we have to make sure this is a mid-segment. So this point right here would have to be a midpoint. And it does look like these two pieces are both equal in length, both 9. This side, both sides are equal to 11, so that works. And now I'm going to have to look at the relationship between these two sides. Since this is the mid-segment, if I double this, that would give me the 18. So if I double my x, it's going to give me 18. So I'm going to go through, divide both sides by 2. This is going to be x equals 9. Now in this one again, they just want us to solve for x. 
We do have to be careful that when we're looking at this that he that you don't go through and do something crazy like you know start plugging stuff in. Sometimes it'll work and sometimes it'll give you something completely different than what's here. So please be careful with that. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. We are actually now this problem is one of the problems that actually goes in your regular notebook. So on this problem if I were to look at it, they want me to make sure that I find kind of several links here. So first of all they tell you that um, M N and P are all midpoints. So if those were midpoints, that means that on this side, this gets cut into two equal pieces. On this side, let's go through. Sorry, my pen's having issues here. Okay, this. try this again. So this side and, and this piece and this piece would be equal because N is the midpoint. On this side P is the midpoint which means that this side and this side are going to be equal. Now I think it's important to know that information before you even start because again they give you a lot of information in this section at the very beginning about some of these lengths but if you don't really know that M, N, and P are midpoints, it's going to be kind of an issue. Also, they have two things that they want you to find here. They want you to find N, P, and they want you to find Y, Z. Now, I'm just going to make an answer box over here so I can be sure to know when I've kind of finished what I need. So, first of all, if we take a look at this very first part, there's one other piece of information they give us up here in the actual directions. They tell us the perimeter of NMP is 60. So remember, perimeter is the distance around. So MNP is this one right here. So if I'm looking at that, if I know that that perimeter has to be 60, I know one piece is 22, and I know one piece is 24. So if I were to subtract those, that would give me some useful information. And if I subtract those, I end up with 14, which means this side right here is 14. Again, I'm just trying to get information that might be helpful later on. So let's focus on now. Um, NP was one of the things they wanted us to find. When we found this 14, that last piece was NP, so that's going to be 14. Now they want us to find YZ. So YZ is this side right here which again, if I'm talking about mid-segment, would have to pair up with this one. So if I want to be able to find YZ, I could double what I get for MP, and that could give me that information. So if I have YZ, MP is 22. So if I were to double that, that would give me 24. Oh, excuse me. So if I go to solve now, YZ is going to be 2 times 22, which will give me 44. So that's the last piece I need to find for my box, so YZ is 44. Now again, we don't know units or anything else, so that will give us the big information on our piece. Okay, let's try one more. So on this problem it wants us to find angle AMN and angle ANM. So we kind of have two pieces to find. And again I'm going to make my answer key over here. So I can make sure that I plug all my stuff in there. And if I look at this triangle, this is kind of an interesting triangle. Because on this triangle, where did my pen go? On this triangle, N is the midpoint on this side, 
and M is the midpoint on this side, I can tell by the markings, but it's interesting because this triangle has four equal markings, which actually makes the big triangle ABC be isosceles, because these sides, those two equal pieces added together, are going to equal these two added sides added together. That's going to be good information. Also, it makes this little triangle ANM to be an isosceles triangle as well. So remember, if it's isosceles, if these two sides are equal, if it's 75 here, that means it also has to be 75 here. That's important information to know, because what they're telling you is, if this is isosceles, if these two sides are equal, then that means that these angles down here also have to be equal. That's important to know. Okay, I'm going to take that yellow back off, but just so you can follow me for a minute. Now, if I were to take this, put my shade up a little bit here, and I were to kind of cover this part for just a minute. This line right here that's coming out with N and this line coming here are going to be, par are going to be parallel to each other, which means that if it's going to be 75 degrees right here, that it also has to be 75 degrees there. Those would be considered to be corresponding angles. So if I move this for a minute, A, N, M would be this one, and that would be 75 degrees, and that's ba based on the fact of corresponding angles. Now again, I'm just trying to leave little reminders to myself about how I'm actually solving these. Now if I put the piece up here, and I'm going to cover it again, oops, went a little too far there and I looked at this, if this angle right here is 75, that means this angle right here is also going to have to be 75 as well. Because they are again corresponding angles. So if they're corresponding, that means this one is also 75 degrees.